Ladies and gentlemen, oh, sweet baby Skrillex, it's Monday, it's me, your boy, your bounding baby boy, with ball bags as big as Bournemouth. Yeah, I'm here, I'm back, once again with the pill behaviour, oi oi, come on, got a, got a nutsack full of the good stuff, got a lobster full of dreams, got a mug full of uh, I guess Friday's coffee remnants. Probably just leave that one alone. I got a sack full of shoe throwers, sack full of flip flop flingers, sack full of high heel hurlers, Yeezy yeeters, trebuchet trainers, trainer trebucheters, uh, Trey uh, Trayvon. Uh, oh, I don't know. I I don't know. I have a browser full of bollocks though as well. And even better than that. Your boy's gone and got a new website, Threshold.fm. Now has a brand new fancy website with a brand new fancy archive section with all the shows archived there for your perusal, for your on-demand perusal. You can go in there and listen to... Oh, God. I mean, you could listen to me again all day long. Just just coffee and memes just directly into your into your mind. Your, your, your mind with, with like... Meme cannons into into the mind receivers, the mind receptors. Um, what else is there? There's some really good shows on there. Let's go. Oh, this is much quicker than the last website. Gold Top. You could uh, roll call, smorgasbord sessions, all aboard with Duff, Rankins Records, Ames MC, the Mezzanine Show with a regular Joe, which is coming up now at eleven o'clock after this show. Uh, Mitch Wade calls in self-help show combine radio scientific fm they're all in there they're all in there you can go there you can click on a button to get notified and get sent messages when the shows go live oh god it's like it's like the it's like the futuristic gay luxury communism already and jesus it's only monday ladies and gentlemen welcome to coffee and memes steady job and a couple extra potatoes that's all i want you're getting on you're pushing 30 sluggy you know it's time to think about getting some ambition Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm, on YouTube, on Facebook, just smeared roughly across the flat earth like a bagel with some schmear. Um, good, some good bits uh, today. Man, uh, man, performs bizarre sex dance for angry pheasant uh, whilst wearing only a G-string. My initial reading of that headline was angry peasant. Which I thought would be, a, <laughs> just, I mean, either way is a pretty bizarre scene. But I don't know whether or not we're still referring to people as peasants. Probably not in 2019. That's probably deeply problematic. Scantily clad farrier Steve Phelps stepped in to help a client who was having problems with a territorial pheasant on his land in the most bizarre way possible. The hero we deserve, not the hero we need. Um, man loses court appeal against Mr. Stinky, the boss who farted on him. I'm gonna be, I do not like the sound of Mr. Stinky. Not one bit. Uh, Elon Musk uh, drops rap single called R.I.P. Harambe, which is pretty much the best thing you're going to find on the internet today. Uh, protester seen eating raw squirrel at London Vegan Festival. Uh, this is our spam-headed uh, carnivore friend, who is sort of like the carnivore equivalent of um, the Peter lot that like to roast fake dogs in the street it's the kind of um you know like the political shoehorn where like the people on the really far right and the people on the really far left are actually much more similar than they'd like to admit he's kind of like the um uh, here he is i oh, know it's not gonna come up hold on i'll get him up oh god yeah, no, i've got a big forehead Poor. you know i don't want to uh, forehead shame him or whatever if that's a thing um but oh enough guys oh, he's got a bit of yeah you eat, eat your dinner off for that you could eat your bait you could you could fry an egg on that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the, I mean, it's the same with diets, basically. Like if you're at the really far end on the meat section, on the carnivore section, and the really far end on the vegan section, you, you just kind of, 
you're kind of the same in more ways than you'd like to admit. Anyway, I digress. Um, what else we got? Uh, UK porn age verification rules will not start on the April on the first of April, which is today. So thank God for anyone planning to tug one out on their lunch break today. You will not need to provide ID. Um, oh God, I have sort of misty, misty watercoloured memories of trying to buy cigs and trying to buy booze underage and you know everyone knew the one shop was run by the old lady that didn't didn't id anybody oh they truly were the days of trying to get into the volks in brighton when you're only 15 with a photocopied passport where you scan your passport in on your parents computer cut out a few numbers on microsoft paint move them around and then print it out and then photocopy the printout so it looks like just a straight up photocopy of the passport and then give that to the bouncers and there was a time um i want to sort of throw the volks bouncers under the bus however it was 20 years ago now <laughs> no, with this uh, but there was a time when the uh, the bouncers would say that a photocopy passport was indisputable ID. That's right, indisputable ID for a photocopy of passport. So we're pretty pleased about that. Uh, we then got to the point where um, some friends were like, oh, you couldn't do that sort of passport. If I give you my passport, can you do the scanning and moving the numbers around sort of routine for me? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that. And uh, we, we would then alter people's names on it. And uh, so uh, I'll use fake names for this. Uh, so we had a friend of ours who was a girl. We changed her middle name to Pills. <laughs> it's like Mary Pills Smith. <coughs> that was amusing. They never noticed. They didn't care. Like, they used to have a sort of weird policy whereby if you didn't have any ID and you were clearly very, very young, they'd just make you wait outside for half an hour and then let you in. Like, you're like, no, you just had to sort of basically go and sit off in a little sort of bouncer-imposed gulag at the side of the entrance. Now you have to sit in the sort of, sit on the shame chair, go and sit on the naughty step for half an hour and then you can go in because you don't have any ID. God bless them. If they hadn't let us in underage, I'd, I'd, have, it would, I'd have probably grown up a decent human being not having been exposed to drum and bass at such an early age. Uh, El Chapo uh, to launch fashion label from behind bars. Fucking why not? Might as well, aren't you? You've got to make a pound note in this, in this, this day and age. Uh, bookshop slammed for Mother's Day display featuring Rose West book. <laughs> this is too good because uh, there's only t there's two ways that this could have happened. Uh, either someone thought it was funny or someone did, like, I don't know, some old dear didn't notice. I just, just saw, like, the cover of the book that says, Love As Always, Mum, which it, it, the book is uh, a book written by the daughter of Rose West is a sort of book written to her. I mean, you know, presumably about the significant ordeal that, you know, Rose West put the kids through. Um, but, you know, the, you know, they never judge a book by its cover, but the cover, it does look like a nice sort of slightly lighthearted, like a, war, a warming, maybe just sort of holiday, nice holiday read. Um, you, you know, and without closer inspection or, you know, knowing too much about the West family... Not Kanye West. Hmm, that'd be an interesting collab. Rose West still alive. Kanye West versus Rose West rap battle. Hmm. I think there could be a comedy sketch in that. Anyway, uh, yeah, you just think, oh, that looks like a sort of nice mumsy, <laughs> mumsy book, but he's such a serial killer. <coughs> yeah, I'm still ill, by the way. Um, that's not going anywhere. God, dear. I think it's, I think it's all the pingers from the mid noughties catching up with me um got some decent shoe throwers here guys 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 oh, that's rose just there she looks like they're literally like in peckham hipsters that appear to be like dressing like rose west yeah, that's a thing now i mean yeah anyway um yeah we've got uh babylon by maz tech that's a bit of a hoot uh beat down by culprit shout me by icicle uh danny bird Spelt with a Y. Uh, starting it over. Turno remix. Clamp's remix of Mean Teeth. You having that one? Uh, stressed Out by Reckless. One more time. Insomniacs. Spelt with an X. Uh, Hold It Like That. Red Pill. Um, Never Tell Me. Hieroglyphics. And Vertigo by Miss In. Um, 
relatively easy easy names there. Quite a, quite a sort of well mannered bunch, I guess. Um, listen, let's have this beat down bit by um, Culprit. That wake you up. <laughs> watching on YouTube or Facebook, don't be afraid to smash that like button. You might get beat down. Drop me a comment, let me know where you're listening. Tell me what you had for breakfast. I'm genuinely interested. If you're watching on Facebook, don't be afraid to smash that share button. Spicy little nugget. It's like a 20 pack of nugs. Some sort of sweet, spicy sauce. Just saying, I've got more followers on SoundCloud than Elon Musk. Just putting it out there. That said, he might have um, more plays on this one track than I've got on my whole profile ever. <laughs> you might get beat down. Yeah. Yeah, this is Beat Down by Culprit. It's a naughty boy. Could be a contender. Here we got some Berlin crew in the house. Harry's listening on an abandoned airfield. He's lost. Go home, Harry. Go home. Big Jules is on Facebook. Woo! Chrissy Barrow's on Facebook. See y'all. I feel y'all. Feel y'all like Ant-Man flying into Uranus and expanding. Is that what happens? I don't know. Eight hey, Family Joe's up in the hizzle. Michael Mooch's up in the hizzle. Sting Grief's up in the hizzle. Sir Hat Trick Moore. Hey, nice. Like it. He's up in the hizzle. Dimmy's up there. Fireflake Lee. They're all there. All decent, honest, God-fearing folks just out for a better way of life. Woo. Right. Um, 
Oh, interesting little nugget for you. Now we've got the new website all up and going. Uh, anyone who's on the Patreon, anyone who's supporting for 10 bucks a month or more, help keep this fucking dream alive. And uh, now we'll get five pounds a month's worth of store credit for the Threshold store, which will have a lot more new merch going up on it soon. Um, and you can spend that on actual physical merchandise. Uh, so you can save it up. You get five a month, a few months. Get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself. I'm gonna get some hats done. I'm gonna get some sweatshirts on there. Some hoodies, some bits and some bobs. So yeah, anyone who's already on the Patreon, uh, I'll be sending out invites for uh, Threshold.fm accounts. And if you use the same email that you have on your Patreon, set up an account there, and then first of every month, bang, another five, another fiver in the account. Spend it on anything you want. Um, you know, if you if you're feeling generous, you could gift a t-shirt or an item of merch to another another threshold listener, another lobster. That just would be nice, wouldn't it? God, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be lovely? Maybe I'll get some like threshold branded butt plugs or something. It'd be quite fun to gift another listener a butt plug. Hey, no, I tell you what, you can get these. Uh, <laughs> take a little detour here. You can get vibrators that plug into. Um, like an MP3 player or whatever, and they vibrate in time to the bass. So I imagine this would be a nice gift for a loved one, wouldn't it? One of them, and then a load of tunes that you'd made on on a, on a little MP3 player with them. It's like, oh, there you are, babe. Hey, oh, babe, treat yourself. Yeah, I made made a couple of bangers, made a few rollers on there for you, babe. Babe, babe, babe. You know, I, you know, I'm working away at the moment, babe. You know, so I made you a few rollers. Yeah, you plug it into your vibrator. I, you know, think of me, yeah, babe, babe. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so Elon Musk, oh boy, uh, he's dropped a rap single uh, called R.I.P. Harambe, and I'm going to be honest with you, it's an absolute jam. Um, so, <laughs> Jesse Hardy, man, of the Lab Bible reports. Uh, just when you thought uh, life on Elon Musk, uh, uh, the life of Elon Musk, I like life on Elon Musk. Just when you thought life on, like life on Mars. Just when you thought life on Elon Musk couldn't get any more bizarre. He goes and outdoes himself by pulling out one of his most random stunts yet. Seems the man who sent a Tesla car into space and is regularly spotted having confusing Twitter outbursts. Um, only confusing to you, Jess Hardy, man. Everyone else knows exactly what he's on about. Uh, has now gone and released his very own rap single, because why not? Oh, I hope he gets some face tattoos. Oh, he's changed his name to Young Musk. <laughs> <laughs> It almost makes me want to get back on Twitter. Uh, wow. <laughs> on Emo G Records. Ah, oh, so good. And he hasn't even, like, chosen a... <coughs> yeah, he hasn't even got a proper SoundCloud URL. Oh, I'm dying. I'm going to die soon. Uh, it's getting weirder still. Anyway, look, let's just uh, play play the song. It's it's an absolute jam. Sipping on some bomb, baby. We on our way to heaven. Amen. Amen. All I be around, baby. Smoking on some strong, yeah. And gorilla zoo. And we thinking about you. All we ever do, thinking about you. We back at the zoo, man. Thinking about you, man. Where my girl is at? We miss you. We really, really miss you. Incredible. On that bomb, babe. We thinking this about is... you. <laughs> amen, amen. R.I.P. Harambe. We smoking on oh, this. This is Shea Thrower of the Year. We love you. And we thinking about you. Harambe. That's all. In the zone. We love you. Harambe. That's all. Oh, 
Oh, I mean, it's, it's, there are calls for the rewind in the chat. Yeah. I mean, it's. But not even going to bother. Well, I mean, it's not drama based, so I don't have to speak to the rewind committee. I'm literally free to do what I want. R.I.P. Harambe, each and every time, baby boy, still miss you, brother. We miss you, we really miss you. Uh, I think Elon Musk is really like, God, how about these lights, though, eh? 25 quid off Amazon, money well spent. Can't argue with that. Woo. All right, all right. Okay, now. Uh, it's like G.A.Y. up in there. Um, he has certainly certified, has solidified his place as ultimate shit lord, hasn't he? What an absolute dumb. God bless him. Um, some people have been pointing out some rather funny um, things in the Metro of late uh, with old Elion. Basically, Jasper Hamill, my arch nemesis, although I kind of like him now, just, I don't know. I feel like he's like an annoying little brother. You know, he's annoying and that, but you know, I love him, don't I? I love him, my brother, isn't he? Love him. Um <coughs> He writes all the stories about Elion, and um, they literally, he's done about three in a row that have like really ridiculous, um, uh, ridiculous puns, doubler entendres, sexual doubler entendres in the, uh, in the title. Let's track him down. Oi, e uh, oi, Hamill. Come on, Hamill. Where are you? Uh, yeah, that's the... Yeah, Elon Musk unleashes graphic image of his massive red-hot inflamed rocket. Like, is this a, this, a, this a new direction you're taking, Hamill? What's... Look, let's see what else have we got. There's a... God, he writes a lot of bollocks, though, doesn't he? Where are we? Come on. Look, I've seen others. <sighs> Don't mess me around. God, he writes about 100, 100 stories a day, doesn't he? Um, Elon Musk Twitter's gaff defense is tortured for. Uh... All right, look, I should have prepared this in advance. Anyway, look, he does. He likes a likes a sexy Elon Duber on Tondra. You just have to take my word for it. Um, oh, God's sake! All right, look, maybe may, you know what. Maybe I'm worse than Jasper Hamill. You know, thinking about it now, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm no better than these two-bit two, two bit metro hacks. You know, this it's... I, I'm going to... I would lower myself to those standards, you know, if I was writing for them or, or, or for the Lad Bible or for Uni Lad. Never for Six Chirps, though. Come on, I do have some. I do... Yeah, Lee, Lee's in the chat. He knows there were at least two. There wasn't... Yeah, there was definitely a second one. Look, come on, so, someone dig it out. Come on, someone on the lobster crew, dig it out. Help me. Help a brother out. Help a lobster out. Uh, Jasper Hamill. J de hey, the, uh, talking to, talking to uh, Jasper Hamill, there, someone brought up some interesting 2015 articles from him where he wrote an article kind of outing some people who were like torturing dogs and uh, sort of stitching people up and, and getting getting people like basically harassing people. Hamill's done an article about them. They've got onto it and they've decided to try and ruin Hamill's life by superimposing his head onto pictures of people abusing animals and then circulating them around the internet with Hamill's name attached to it. So Hamill has to come out, write in a sort of retort article. Um, uh, and you know, yeah, people in chat, they are saying that there was something along the lines of enormous erections. Anyway... Um, yeah, so then Hamill has to do a sort of clap back. I mean, the photoshops were, they were pretty, pretty crummy. They, they, I mean, any reasonable person. I mean, the head was about five times too big for the body. But uh, nevertheless, Hamill was getting death threats from animal rights people because of very badly shopped photographs of his head onto, onto, video, uh, onto pictures of animal abuse. 
uh, and I saw it. I thought it was like a recent thing, and I was immediately angered. And I was like, "Who are these people? Who are who are they go- coming for my boy?" I suddenly felt like enormously protective of him. I guess like the sort of younger brother, older brother dynamic. And I was like, "He may be a goon, but he's our goon, and we will protect our goon to the death." Anyway, it turns out it was in 2015. It's all blown over now. This is when Hamill used to work at the Mirror. Now he's obviously happy down in the Metro Dungeon, chained to Richard Hartley Parkinson and Rob Hua, writing 15 stories a day for um, just sort of food scraps and that, like swill, you know, like pig swill. It's all just sort of potato peelings and like the nubbing ends of carrots and stuff like that. Well, they come down. Well, the, whoever owns Harmsworth, the guy that owns it, who owns the, the mail and the Metro and the other things, he comes down once a day with a bucket of pig swill uh, basically stuff that you put in on the compost heap and all the Metro journalists, they're all chained up down there. Or they're all like, <laughs> they start squealing and he just throws it all in there. It goes all over all the laptops and everything. And <laughs> all squealing and stuff. And they, and they just scoff it all up in seconds, basically. And that fuels them to write, you know, articles about not sticking bath bombs up your vag. It's a hell of a way to earn a living, but, you know, someone's got to do it. Um, look, should we get into some actual news? Um, okay, well, I say actual. I use the term news very loosely here. Uh, man performs bizarre sex dance for angry pheasant while wearing only G-string. Scantily clad farrier Steve Phelps uh, helps in, uh, steps in to help a client who's having a problem with a territorial pheasant. I fucking hate territorial pheasants. Um on his land in the most bizarre way possible. We're going to probably give this a refresh. Come on, video loading. Let's have a look at this dance then. He's wearing only a G-string. I'm not sure that's necessary. Come on, lad. Come on, Steve. Oh, come on, Mirror. It's pathetic. It's actually pathetic. What's he doing? Oh, what's with the G-string, though? Here he comes. Come on, mate. Come and do your dom- Come and do your- Come and do your dance. <laughs> sort of, he's asserting dominance he's over it. Nasty. So, uh... Why is he stripped uh, down like he's, that? He's, he's, he's gonna do a little dance for the boy. Wow, that is a little dance. Show him the 40. Why have you blurred out his cobblers? I'm a, I'm a grown man, I can- look, he's got some sticks. He's got a sort of weird hat on. He's a- He needs help. He needs professional help. <laughs> this is animal abuse. Right, let's find his let, let's, let's find his details. Oh, look, see that pheasant's giving him the runaround. Shoot it! Come on, eat it. That that'll sort out a territorial pheasant. Cooking it for dinner. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> uh, that's a nice tribal tats. Right, well, I'm I'm not impressed, basically. A scantily clad Cornish man has gone viral after his bizarre sex dance with a pheasant. Mm, they were dancing the forbidden dance. A dance so erotic that it cannot be shown in public. Farrier Steve Phelps stepped in to help a client who was having problems with a territorial pheasant on his land, armed only with a hat and half a G-string. Uh, the pheasant had become so aggressive that every time the man went out to ride on his lawnmower, the bird would attack him, clawing him in the face with sharp talons. Again, shoot the pheasant and eat it. That'll show him who's boss. Come on, if it's going to attack you in the face with its talons, it obviously wants to tear up. Yeah, and as, as far as I know, that pheasant hasn't laid down any particular rule set. You're like, all right, look, we're going to go amateur MMA rules here. So that's basically no heel hooks. And no elbows, but otherwise, you know, anything goes. I mean, if that if the pheasant had come to him with that rule set in mind, maybe headgear, shin pads, that sort of thing, fine, okay, you can abide by the rules. But as far as I know, it's just, I mean, maybe it's not pheasant season. Maybe you're not allowed to, maybe you just have to knock it out. I don't know. But if they want to come to me for advice, they can. They know where I am. Pheasant, yeah, uh, after the client asked Steve for help, he asked his Facebook friends for suggestions on how to deal with it. Okay, so his mates on Facebook have wound him up uh, and was unceremoniously told to shoot it. Right, yeah, see? Some fucking common sense. But one person jokingly suggested the 30, 36-year-old perform a sex dance to assert dominance and claim his territory. Okay. I mean, is this an actual thing or has he just been wound up by people on Facebook? I hope so. Steve, who knows his onions uh, in this field as he runs a pheasant shoot... Uh, said, the comment was someone taking the mick more than anything. Okay, good. 
Uh, it's breeding season, so they pheasants show off. <laughs> it's breeding season, so they pheasants show off. Who's the biggest and best? I took him up on the joke. Uh, to be fair, the pheasant looks shocked more than anything. Poor little wee pheasant. I'm going to shoot him having my dindins. Oh, they are delicious. One of my friends bought me a one-sided... A one-sided G... Oh, right, yeah. One-sided G-string for Christmas. I thought, I know what I'll wear to show off my masculinity. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm preparing uh, I'm preparing for the dance uh, and his outfit. Steve said, I was bent over with my tail wagging. Uh, I had sticks between my butt cheeks, which acted as tail feathers. And I was wagging, wagging my butt at him. Wow, yeah, that's the, um, the one-sided... Uh, G-string, of which he speaks. That's quite the look. That's truly harrowing. Um, nice tats. Yeah, lovely. Nice tits as well. Very, very good. Um, he followed me for a second, so I went back and shook my bum again. He hasn't attacked anyone since the sex dance. Hey, nice. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I think he was shocked into dismissal. Right. Steve and his friends have even named the feisty bird Reg, because he looks like one of the Cray twins. Nice. Very nice. Um, okay, look, there he is. Good boy. That pheasant, look at that beady-eyed little cunt. Shoot him, have him for dinner. Uh, let's have a little, what else have we got here? Um, there's an icicle bit here, which is kind of dubstepy, but I want to play this Maztec bit. It's nice. Um, there's a bit about Maztec in Clayton's book. Clayton hates him. Absolutely hates him. I mean, he hates everyone, but... Particularly, he particularly hates Cabby, uh, particularly Maztec, and particularly hates Fierce. He really hates Fierce. Clayton hates Bailey as well. Uh, the uh, chapter about Cabby, he opens with, Cabby is the stereotypical fuckboy. <laughs> Dude has been in the scene for ages and has never amounted to anything. Here's the opening gambit about Fierce. Fierce, where do I start about this drunken waste man? Uh, Tony Coleman gets it as well, although I believe they squashed the beef. Brocky. Drum and bass arena. Maztec. Bailey, Bookham, Friction, hates Friction. Cheer, yeah, that's Babylon by Maztec. It's fun by me. 
Hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a lover, not, a, not a fighter. It's all fine, you know. Just live and let live, man. Hey, listen, um, man loses court appeal against Mr. Stinky, <laughs> a boss who farted on him. Hardy man of the Lad Bible reports. You may remember we recently told you about an Australian man who tried to sue his boss for repeatedly farting on him. I, I didn't actually. I wonder how long ago that was. Um, come on, chop chop. Uh, yeah, that was in April last year. Uh, that was pre, pre Coffee and Memes radio show. So that effectively, it just doesn't even matter to me. Um, uh, David Hinkst from Melbourne had filed a suit against construction engineer last year, uh, construction engineering last year, due to his boss Greg Short, aka Mr. Stinky, uh, who apparently kept farting on or near him. Hinkst, fifty six. Ended up losing the case after a judge said that farting on an employee does not necessarily constitute bullying. <laughs> that's a very lenient judge. God, I mean, that's considering they just bloody sacked off our gal in the in the police force for farting outside the captain's office or whatever it was. They fired her for that. Yeah, it's not like we got coppers to spare. Uh, however, he refused to give up without a fight and launched an appeal. Uh, and uh, to his 1.8 million Australian dollars, which is about 36 pounds uh, in sterling. Uh, only thing is, the Court of Appeal in Australia, state of Victoria, uh, has also dismissed the case, ruling that even if his allegations of uh, malicious flatulence were true, it wouldn't necessarily mean he's being bullied. Are that hey, it's come on, mate. Just be the fucking band for mate. Just be the fuck. Call take a bit of fart on you, mate. It's like I'm a fixed fifty-six year old man. Please, I do not want my boss farting on me. Oh mate, why do you gotta be such a fucking killjoy, mate? Can't take a couple of little trips to Trumpton right here in your face, mate. Just fucking workplace banter. We built this whole fucking country on banter, mate. Uh speaking to AAP after his original hearing, Hinkst explained, I would be sitting with my face to the wall. My face to the wall, and he would come into the room, which was small and had no window. He would fart behind me and walk away. He would do this five to six times a day. He added, he thrusted his bum at me while he was at work. He said, in retaliation, he would spray the supervisor with deodorant and call him Mr. Stinky. Sounds like they just need to snog and get it over with. Hinkst also said uh, that Short, who was his manager at the time, verbally abused him over the phone and would taunt him with gestures. Oh dear. Um, he, told the sh uh, he told the court, Short thrusted his bum at me while at work and testified he had moved out of a communal office space at the engineering firm's building to try and escape Short's constant farting. Also, um, he should have... Um, I guess you could have knocked him out. Uh, only for Short uh, then allegedly became... Uh, <sighs> allegedly began coming into Hink's new private office and continued to break wind several times a day. Short reportedly defended himself by saying, look, I don't recall doing it. It may have been once or twice. Maybe I don't know. That a, seems like a pretty decent defence, to be fair. Did I, did I? I don't know. It probably wasn't intentional. Yeah, I was sorry about it, but I did. I don't recall doing so. I'm not going to flat out say... Uh, I'm not flat out saying I did or didn't. I can't remember doing it. <laughs> that seems like a good defence. Like if I was a judge, I'd be like, well, I mean, he's pretty blasé about that. Um, it, uh, I don't know. He was like, no way, I never did it, how dare he, he's an arsehole. Right, okay, yeah, you probably did do it, right, come and find him. It's like, I, yeah, I might have done, don't know, I ate a lot of beans, probably not, I mean, mean to, yeah, whatever, sorry, mate. Uh, he said that he wouldn't have done it with the intention of causing distress or harassment. Justice Philip Priest, Justice Philip Priest, preparing to judge, pointed out that the farting wasn't the key issue in his original case, uh, which centred more around the phone calls. According to Nine News, Hinks told the judge he now wants to make the matter, take the matter to the High Court in response to the ruling. Well, I don't know whose side I'm on, really. Um, uh, probably stinky... Miss I don't know, I'll tell you what. If I, was a, if I was in an office and my boss kept doing that to me, there would be real significant trouble. I, it would be... It, I would make that a problem for him. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would not go well. I mean... What I once I would get away with it once, like you do that again, <laughs> pal. <laughs> just, just watch it. Um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, good news. Um, for um, 
well, bad news, actually, I guess, uh, for mosquitoes. Scientific study finds scary monsters and night sprites by Skrillex uh, stops mosquitoes from having sex. Now, yeah, uh, researchers concluded that observations from the study could be used to help develop new ways to pre prevent mosquito-carried disease. I told you all along that Skrillex would save the world, and nobody believed me, did they? I said, look, he will, uh, he will end malaria, he will end extreme poverty, uh, he will end the far right, uh, he will end communism. He is basically a panacea. He is a cure for all things, little ba little dear baby Skrillex. Oh, baby Skrillex, so tender and mild. Uh, <laughs> he will um, st he will sort out North Korea. He'll end that whole Israel Palestine thing. He'll go over there, sort all of that out, get them all. Um, they'll all be partying and dancing in the streets. Uh, after Big Skrilly's been down there, uh, blaring out. A uh, study recently published in the journal Acta Tropica on mosquito feeding and breeding habits found that the insects are less likely to eat or reproduce when the song Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites by Skrillex is playing. Which is weird, because I tell you what, if, that's, if that song comes on on my playlist at home and the missus is in, it's on, basically. Like, it's... Uh, whew. Shit gets hot under the collar when that comes on in the flat. Uh, the specific type of mosquito researched was the... Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, Aedes aegypti. Aegis aegypti. I'm going to go with Aegis aegypti. Uh, also called the yellow fever mosquito. Well, that's a bit easier, isn't it? I'm use the fucking Latin. Known for carrying multitude a multitude of diseases. Before detailing the experiment, researchers noted that it is known that electronic music, and more specifically Skrillex, uh, Skrillex's breakout singles, low-frequency vibrations, disrupt mating habits in insects. Right. They found that the noise makes it harder for them to receive signals from hosts. For the experiment, researchers created a music-on, music-off environment, uh, which they studied. Uh, with these uh, yellow fever mosquitoes and came to some conclusions. Mosquitoes in the music on environment were less likely to feed on the provided host and were less likely to reproduce than mosquitoes in the music off environment. Researchers believe that these findings can be used to help develop ways to control uh, the uh, mosquitoes that carry the diseases. Uh, the abstract of the full study is available there. Um, I think, really, what this is claiming is that in all countries and areas where they have a problem with mosquitoes and carry, uh, that carry malaria, they should have large sound systems blaring out scary monsters and night sprites 24 hours a day until the mosquitoes die out. I, for one, would donate to a just giving um, account that was attempting to, to do that. I think, um, and in fact, I think all, anyone who's ever listened to that record should donate because it's our duty as either current dubsteppers or former dubsteppers to, you know, give back. I mean, really, it's time for dubstep to give back to the world from which it has taken so much. <laughs> I, think, I think you will all agree. Um, right, look, let's might as well then segue into this icicle bit that is uh, kind of 140-ish. It's uh, weird, but I like it. Remember, coming up at 11 o'clock, your boy... Irregular Joe brings the mezzanine show now to Mondays at 11. And also coming very soon, our gal Jen. Power Jen, 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 Jen. It's about to start either this week or next. A weekly show on a Wednesday at 11. Ooh. Throwing down the gauntlet there, Jen. There's no escaping now. I wonder what happens if you play like Barry White or something to um, to the mosquitoes. So they just start fucking like crazy.
according to my stats on the uh, radio back end, someone's been listening for 337 hours straight. Just wondering about like, someone who's been playing like some sort of online computer game and has just died at the computer with Threshold on in the background. Wake up! If you're listening, if you can hear me, wake up! You're hogging all the bandwidth. <laughs> And also, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we've got a nice, nice, fresh new website, which has a nice, fresh new archive section with everything in there for your, that you can listen and download every show. Uh, also, I can probably give out an RSS feed for that, that you could put into a podcast app and um, it would just all shows in chronological order. You could imbibe every single one of them. Stick it down, mm, sip it down, mm, yum, 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 yum. Like a nice pint of soy. <laughs> I could get back into dubstep if it was all like this, quite honestly. That's a nice bit of gear, Icicle. Good boy. Very good boy. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a nice bit. Um, UK porn age verification rules will not start on April the 1st. Um... New UK legislation that effectively bans citizens from ac- accessing pornographic websites without first confirming they are over 18 will not start today, as had been reported. Any news on when it will actually start, or is it all just recycled bollocks from your previous articles? Yes, it's all recycled bollocks from your previous articles. Uh, the new rules are aimed at protecting kiddies. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, there is no definite time frame in place for when the rule change will actually take place. Uh, there's a picture of a bum there. Um, I think of, we've had it up before, but it's a decent bum. Bears repeating. Um, there it is again. This is them using the same picture. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Oh, they've got a clear who are, clear browsing data. Who who has that is so badly photoshopped. Who has their text on their screen that big only that is the work of a true psychopath unless you are like significantly visually you know um impaired only an actual psycho would have their text on a browser that big you would have to be a, a absolute maniac um anyway let's find out about chapo's um fashion brand el chapo to launch fashion label from behind bars in February, the notorious drug lord known as El Chapo was found guilty of murder, conspiracy charges, drug trafficking, money laundering, firearms possession, and all round being a nobody, nobody boy. Uh, the 61-year-old, whose real name is Jacqueline Guzman, uh, is believed to have amassed billions from his drug empire, and it seems being behind bars hasn't dulled his appetite for making moolah. Guzman is yet to be sentenced, but could spend the rest of his life behind bars, unless he escapes. Despite this, he recently signed a contract uh, from his cell in a Manhattan federal prison granting uh, <laughs> granting the rights to his name and signature to a limited liability company. Uh, according to Sky News, the company will be run on the outside by his 29-year-old wife. She don't give a fuck. She, she's a... Yeah. She's wild. Um, Emma... 
uh, Coronel Aspuro. And the company called El Chapo Guzman will incorporate Guzman's signature in the brand's logo. Christ. Um, Miss Aspuro said the company will be run as a joint effort and that her seven-year-old twin daughters are their inspiration. Got a holler for that dollar, ain't you? Speaking to the New York Daily News, she said, This project is an idea, Jaquin, and I have had for a long time. But he was in the US, uh, before he was in the USA, we talked a lot about this topic. Really, it's both of our ideas. We talk a little about both of our ideas uh, the, the, that he has and a touch of mine. Obviously, our great inspiration is our daughters. The former beauty queen added that the company would start out with caps and aim to be accessible to everyone. She said, I, can't do I, I can see the kind of novelty factor of it. Like, uh, that it's completely ridiculous. But, like, he will be responsible, like, for the torture and deaths of so many people. Dudes amassed a billion, a billion dollars from selling drugs. Like, like the death toll of his empire must be in the thousands, possibly even the tens of thousands. God, I mean, it's... And then, no, it's just, just fashion now. Just wear a hat with his signature on it, like... It's mad. It's like wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt. Like, just the the ignorance of we of wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt, not knowing that he literally put homosexuals into concentration camps, or that like the the catalog of awful racist things he did, or just the fact that he executed artists for the crime of being artists. Yes, of course, emblazoned him on a t-shirt. He is a pop culture icon. Uh, he was an absolute monster. It's bizarre, isn't it? Uh, I want to start with a line of caps. Uh, I'll also go on to produce clothes and jackets. <sighs> Mad. It's unclear what will happen with the company's potential profits. <laughs> um, as the son of Sam law prevents criminals from making money from within prison. However, oh, son of Sam. He was a, like a serial killer that thought his dog was talking to him. Something like that. Um, law prevents criminals from making money in prison. However, the company already has an official website and could start selling clothes in the US and Mexico this summer. <sighs> you know the hipsters are going to be all over this shit. Uh, but before you go thinking that it might be cool to buy a cap with... Yeah, yeah. Before you think it might be cool to buy a cap with El Chapo's signature on it, you might want to take a look into some of the crimes he's been accused of committing. Court papers accused him of drugging and raping girls as young as 13. According to the BBC, former associate Alex... Uh, Shifentes is quoted as saying Guzman called the youngest of the girls his vitamins Jesus Christ uh, because he believed the sexual activity uh, made him young he's also alleged to have ordered hitmen to carry out hundreds of killings <sighs> now nah, stick his name on a hat yeah sell it 25 quid buy him on eBay <laughs> absolutely mental um, right listen it's basically the end of the show, and uh, I'll actually get cut off at 11, so I will. it's time for VIP list, and then we'll play this Danny Bird number uh, to play us out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, listening today, and thank you much to everyone who's been checking out the new website. You can make sure you hit that notification button on it so you can get notified when shows go live, um, and also of other cool dude things. Send you other cool dude notifications for cool dudes, cool gals, all coolies. Um, thank you to everyone that's supporting on Patreon. As I said, everyone who is supporting for $10 a month or more on Patreon will now get a fiver in their account to spend on merch every month. And it rolls over, so you can save it up. It's not going to disappear. You can forget about it for years and realise you've got like 100 quid in there or something that you can spend on beautiful, beautiful quality threshold gums. Oh, like this. Oh, beautiful. Church of the Shoe Thrower t-shirt at just 20 notes. Wow, and that is a quality garm. You can see there that that is, oh, that is a, hot, a hot garment for this season. And with the sun coming out, what better way to pledge your allegiance to this season's hottest new death cult than with a Church of the Shoe Thrower t-shirt. Um, you also, if you join the Patreon, you get your name shouted out at the end of every show. Uh, just like this. Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mushin, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bollard, Zara Pickle, uh, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Ansub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Joe Ryder, Andrew Heischelbeck, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, 
Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, uh, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hanno Bartando, Le- Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, the guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphreys, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Alton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Side Trance is not superior to drum and bass. Uh, D- Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Brakes, The Bills, Carissa Barthelson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Genvy, Flaxis, Alexander Cassidy, Matt Wright, Dylan Laws, and Grand Baby Boy Sullivan. Thanks so much for your patronage. Uh, I'll be sending uh, everyone uh, get stickers as well. So if you join up, you get a nice packet of stickers. Uh, for people that are abroad, um, I'm getting more stickers done. Uh, different designs done uh, over the next couple of weeks so i'll double them up with the current ones because it's just otherwise i'll just go broke sending out uh oh, fucking australia it's about three quid or something it's, it's unbelievable but just it's and it's not even real oh it's disgraceful so thank you everyone that is supporting already if you want to support there are you go to donate on the website or um just go to our patreon page patreon.com slash threshold fm and you can sign up there and I will love you tenderly forever. All right, so look, to play us out, this is uh, Danny Bird. It's called Starting It Over, and it is remixed by Turno. Mmm, yeah. Get a little heat in you. Padgage. Little gentle warming of the... Padgage. Look at that website! Oh. Whoa. Remember to hang around on Threshold. For a regular Joe's Mezzanine show at 11. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, switch over. Naughty bear.
yes indeed thank you very much for tuning in today jump over to threshold.fm now if you're on facebook or youtube and catch your boy regular joe for the next two hours with the mezzanine show but i'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m for more coffee and more memes more of this good old fashioned grooving around thank you very much i will see you tomorrow i love you goodbye